I'm going to show you 10 really easy ways to increase website traffic in just a few minutes and we're starting right now. If you want to transform your website into a customer or lead generation machine, I'll show you all my best tips, tactics, and secrets to get there fast. Let's dive in. Hey guys, Wes McDowell here, web strategist for The Deep End, and if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and do it. Just click the subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it so you never miss another video you need to succeed online. In today's video, I'm gonna show you 10 really easy strategies you can use to implement to really amplify your web traffic in just a matter of minutes. Now, I'm not saying you have to do all of these strategies, just pick a couple that seem easiest to you, and you'll see some really great results. Okay, so let's jump right into it, starting with number one, and that is promoting old and new articles that you write on LinkedIn. Now this works especially well if you have a lot of connections on LinkedIn. So all you're gonna do here is go through your existing blog posts and see which of them your connections would find most interesting. Make a list of those and just drip them out on LinkedIn every few days. And then every time you write a new post, think of that as well. So think of what would they wanna see and then put the article up in the blog section of your site and then link to it from LinkedIn. And so I would definitely recommend using a really attention grabbing headline and a nice looking image and a little description as well that entices people to click through over to your site. Now a bonus tip for this one, video content works especially well on LinkedIn. So what you might wanna do is if you have a little bit more time and resources, repurpose some of your best blog posts into video content and then upload that natively into LinkedIn along with a description and a catchy title and a link back to your site. Now my number two tip comes from Backlinko and that is guest post with an upside down blog post. So let me explain what that is. So if you're familiar with SEO and getting backlinks to your site, you're probably familiar with the concept of guest posting, which is where you basically just reach out to blog owners and say, hey, I've got this idea for an article. Would you mind if I wrote it for you and then got a link back uh, to my site in the bio section? And that works really well for getting those links, not so well for getting clicks through back to your site because what happens is those links are often just kind of buried in the bio section at the bottom of the page and hardly anyone ever gets there to read it. So what's an upside down blog post and how's that gonna help? Well, basically what it is, is you write this article and somewhere near the top of it, you include a few links to other helpful resources that kind of illustrate the points you're making. Uh, but one of those links should be a link back to an article on your site. This way you get two benefits. You get the backlink and you also get a higher probability that people are actually gonna click through over to your site where they can actually convert into a customer. All right, next up is update some of your key pages and posts with what they call LSI keywords. So ranking a page in Google used to mean kind of keywords stuffing a page with the same keyword phrase over and over again, but now Google has gotten a lot better at understanding uh, the topic, the overall topic of what your page is about. So think of LSI keywords as basically related keywords. So let's say you're an interior designer and Google would probably expect to see on an interior design page words like living room or renovations. Basically, these are just words that signal to Google that, hey, this page covers the topic really well because it kind of covers all the words that we would expect to see on a page related to that topic. And as a result, Google likes to reward those pages with higher rankings. Once they think that you have the best page that covers your topic the best, you will start to move up in searches. So basically, you're just gonna wanna go to the website lsigraph.com and enter in the keyword phrase that you're really going for, and it's gonna give you a list of related keywords, what they call the LSI words. Um, and then what you wanna do is just take the ones that make the most sense and try to work them into the content on that page as naturally as you can. All right, next up is schedule your post to tweet up to six times. So I know that sounds excessive. People are always afraid of oversharing their content, but Wise Metrics recently studied how frequency will impact a tweet. And here's some good news if you feel like this would be oversharing. They found that if you post it up to six times, only 14% of your followers will ever see that post more than once. And they found that the second tweet performs 86% as well as the first time. And even the sixth tweet, after you've done it six times, that one still performs 67% as well as the first one. 
So why not stack the deck in your favor, make sure more people see your tweet, very few people will see it more than once. And I just use the website hootsuite.com, it basically allows you to go in and schedule your tweets in advance. So basically you write the article and then you write the six tweets to send out maybe over the course of a week and you're done. Oh, and a bonus tip here, you're definitely gonna wanna make sure you include a nice looking image right there in the tweet. It's really gonna increase the likelihood of people clicking through to your site. And while we're talking about Twitter, you're gonna wanna go through some of your best content and create click to tweet links within that content. So find like five to 10 of your best performing blog posts and go through them each and find little tweetable snippets that you think your readers would enjoy uh, tweeting out to their followers. This could be something inspirational or a really good tip that they can share. Now to do this, you're just gonna to go to the website clicktotweet.com and you're gonna pre-write out the tweet and a link will be generated and you're just gonna put that link right next to uh, the tweetable snippet on your blog post. Then when people click that link, the tweet is already generated, they tweet it out to their followers and you get more eyeballs on your content. All right, next up we have one of my favorite tactics and that's actually just to improve your click-through rate. So you know, whenever one of your pages shows up in a search result, you can really impact the number of people coming to your site if you can just make more people click on your listing than your competitors. So let's pretend you showed up at number 10 for a keyword phrase that was really important to your business and you were to get, you know, 2% click-through rate from that listing. Well, now what if you were able to slightly modify that listing and make it more enticing and get a click-through rate of 4%? Not only is that gonna double the traffic you get just right there, but it's likely gonna make Google take notice and improve your rankings over time, which just results in a positive cycle. Because you know, if Google thinks people are more likely to click on your listing, they're gonna show it higher. They really just wanna show the most relevant results to searchers. And you can definitely hack this by just slightly revamping the title and the description that is shown in that search. So let's start with the title. So what you're gonna wanna do ideally is include the keyword phrase that you wanna rank for, and then also end it with kind of a more enticing benefit also. That's just gonna make it much more clickable. And studies have also shown that uh, titles with numbers in them tend to get more clicks as well. Okay, so that's the title, but what about the description? Well, most businesses kind of waste this opportunity just by talking about the business, uh, maybe how long they've been in business, things like that. What I recommend instead is make this more enticing as well by listing out maybe two or three benefits of your service, or if it's an article, maybe two or three things that are gonna learn from the post. You know, think of it this way, if you can consistently get a higher click-through rate at any given position than Google expects you to get, they're gonna reward you with even higher results, which is just gonna naturally improve your click-through rating as well. All right, next up, create more list articles. Remember how I said that numbers and post titles get more attention? Well, they also result in more shares and more links back to your site as well. So I want you to really start brainstorming questions that your ideal customers might have that you could answer in a list article like this. You know, BuzzSumo recently did a study where they analyzed a million articles and they found that posts with numbers in the title were actually shared six times more than how-to articles. All right, this next one is really easy and that is just to start adding more images to your existing posts or pages. Not only do images help your readers retain more information, uh, but they also keep people on your site longer, which in turn, Google likes to reward that with higher search rankings. And it also results in way more shares. Another BuzzSumo study found that an article with an image every 75 to 100 words was shared on Twitter twice as much as articles with fewer images. Next, you might wanna speed up your website. So site speed is a huge factor that Google uses in its algorithm to determine who shows up where in the searches. And it also has a really big impact on how likely people are to actually stay on your site once they get there. Most people will not wait for your site to load any longer than three seconds. So while I can't really say what you need to do specifically to make your site faster, because every site is different and has different sticking points, but here are a few steps you can take. Just go to Google PageSpeed Insights to get a list of things that you can improve specifically on your site. And you should aim for at least an 85 on both desktop and mobile. 
So just take this list to your developer if you have one, or if you don't, you can go to a website called upwork.com and find a developer who falls in your budget and just give him that list as kind of a punch list of things that they need to improve on your site. Okay, next we have add internal links around your site. So when people think of linking, they always think about getting links from other sites to your site, you know, backlinking, but it's becoming increasingly important to Google that you have a lot of internal linking going on from page to page on your site. It really just signals to them what these pages are all about and how they fit together. And that makes each of those pages a lot more likely to show up in searches. So I want you to really identify the most important pages or articles within your site, and then try to find opportunities on all your other pages, how you can link to those within the text on your pages. The more of a kind of spider web effect you can create with your website from page to page, the better results you're gonna get. All right, now is the time where I wanna hear from you and I wanna know which of these tactics are you most excited to start implementing on your own site. I wanna know all about it, so leave that with any other questions or comments you have in the comments section below. I'll look at everything and I'll answer every question that I possibly can. And if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, you're not gonna to wanna to miss out on any future videos, I promise. So just click the circle icon right down here to subscribe. And if you haven't accessed my free mini course yet, how to guarantee website ROI, that's a good one. You're gonna to wanna to get that by clicking this box right over here. All right guys, I'm Wes McDowell for The Deep End. I'll see you in the next video.